Karen Birchall, Creative Katie here. Welcome to my channel, Mixpedia Creations. Take time to hit the subscribe button. And when you click on the bell, you can choose the option to be notified as soon as I upload. That way you won't miss any videos. Today we have a video in the 12 Days of Christmas series. If you wish to support my channel, you can do so by shopping my Amazon influencer links or donating directly through PayPal link. Both of these links can be found in the description box below. Thank you so much for all your support. Today we are doing a Sea Inspired Christmas Canvas. It's entitled Joy. So I pulled out some music papers and some old sheets from an atlas and I had my gel prints there but I don't end up using them. And the reason I want to use these papers is I like the gold yellowish color that comes out of it. I like the green that's in the maps. That works well with the color scheme that I'm going to go with. And I'm just ripping these into individual little shapes and putting this on an 8 by 10 canvas. You can make do the same exact project, do it bigger, and I plan to. You can also do it smaller completely up to you. You can make a little um, ornament. Do this on a 4x4 four four canvas and have it hanging on the tree. Because this is going to be sea inspired, I will be working with teals and blues and greens. But I know I want to bling it out with a little bit of gold, which is when, you, when all is said and done, you're going to see little bits of this golden old antique music paper peeking through. I'll have to start sourcing out some more uh, vintage music paper. This is so lovely because it's so yellowed with, with time. I think this was originally printed in 1940s or 1950s. The pages are really um, brittle. I'm just gluing this down with gel medium. You can use Mod Podge if you wish. Um, it's personal choice. I prefer using matte medium as the, the kind of surface that it gives. And I put it underneath and over top. So once I give this a dry, I'm going to start applying color. And I just grab my dollar store navy blue. Normally I'm reaching for my Prussian blue, but this is what I had at hand. And I'm kind of working on using up some of these paints that are sitting around that I know I probably aren't, won't be replenishing, but I might as well use them and enjoy them. And I thought, okay, we're gonna use something slightly different. This is a navy blue, but it has a bit of a purple tone to it. So, and I'm applying it with a palette knife going up and down and side to side going in both directions. Now I'm using Artist Loft uh, Green Yellow. I love this color, especially when it works with the blues. It just so makes this beautiful aqua tealy color and when it isn't mixed it peeks through on the canvas and it just brightens up the canvas. So now I want to do some stamping. Now the goal here with stamping is to basically add texture and pattern. I don't really care if it's not a perfect stamp. And because this is a canvas that is not going to be framed, I'm doing making sure that the edges get the same treatment. Here I have some shelf liner that makes a lovely dot pattern. Now I'm using archival ink because it's permanent, because I don't want, when I add water later on, I don't want this to run. But you can also stamp using black or dark blue acrylic paint. Light aqua goes in here, and I'm watering this down a little bit. Now my goal here is to mix those paints. I've still got some of that dollar store navy paint, and I'm just mixing it a little bit. And I love when I mix paints because you get a really unique color blend that you can't get just straight out from the tube. So don't be afraid to mix. Now when you're mixing colors wet, one thing that you need to worry about is that they're next to each other on the color wheel. That way you won't end up with a muddy color like brown or gray. 
So now I am adding a little bit of, this is turquoise. It's Deco Art Premium. And I, I like the consistency of it. It's kind of halfway in between the Liquitex Basics and the Craft Paint. Somewhere in between. So I've been dabbling with a few colors. And I'm thinking, okay, I want to get this to drip. I had to source out my water spritzer. I find the container from the eyeglass spray works really well. So I'm kind of dripping a little bit, but I'm not really getting the effect, the watery effect that I'm wanting. So I kind of end up kind of dabbing that out. But I left this in just to show you that not everything always works the way we think it's going to. So here's kind of my plan. I'm going to put the word joy on here, but I'm kind of putting the letters on here just to see where I want to put this stenciling. Now this stencil is one of my favorite stencils. It's called Segmented Swirl. It is from Americana Deco Art, um, and it is well loved. When you buy it, it is actually blue, and it, all that blue has come off with repeated use and washings, but the stencil's still very good. So I'm putting, um, texture paste. This one is golden light texture paste through a stencil and I'm doing it on the top and on the bottom. But in between you need to dry it. If you're putting texture paste in more than one place and you're moving the stencil, you know, I could kind of hold the stencil up and try, but I didn't want to make a mess. So I took some time to let it dry or to use the heat tool and dry it. The palette knife you see me using there is the one that I prefer for this. You'll either see me using this palette knife or just a credit card. As always, with texture paste and stencils, you need to clean it right away. Otherwise, your stencil will get ruined. So now I want to colorize this white. I, I thought for a while I might just leave it white and... I do end up doing something more with it, but I wanted to put this in here. I wanted this canvas to be really texturized and, and, and mixed media. And I didn't want that texture to be where I'm going to put the letters. So again, the same way that I added the paint to, to the canvas before, I'm just adding it. And it's watered down. I don't want this to be completely opaque. I want that blendy, mixed look. So this is plastic canvas from um, for embroidery, and I'm just, I love this as a stamp. And I'm putting some of the dark blue on the stamp. I'm brushing it on and pressing, and then I'm getting some white. And I'm adding white here because it's a little dark and I want some, I want some, I want lots of interest. And not forgetting the edges. When I clean my stencils, I'll be throwing that embroidery canvas in there as well. So this is my Coastal Escape stamp, and I am going to stamp with gold. Now, I mixed this gold, and I had white still on my palette knife, and it kind of made it not too shiny. So I cleaned it all up, and I'm now stamping with the gold acrylic paint. And this is just adding a lovely kind of fishnetty um, kind of look to it, just adding the bling to this canvas. And when you use acrylic paint with your stamps, you need to take time to clean them as well. I have some gold paint left, so I decide I'm going to add some gold splatters. Too big of a blob, so I'm quickly cleaning it up.
So once everything's dry there, you can see the bling and the shine and, and the loveliness that is on this canvas. So I'm going to put a sand dollar in the middle instead of the O. Now, I cut this out with my silhouette on tag paper because I plan on doing a couple of these. But if you don't have a silhouette, you can simply do what I did with the other letters is make the letters as big as you want and then cut them out and trace them. If it's not firm enough, you can trace it on tag board, middle of folders, junk mail kind of stuff as well. Both work. I wanted something a little bit more permanent. The font that I used here is called Candy Randy, and I believe that it was a font that I downloaded for free from defont.com. So I'm just outlining this letter, and I'm using my Stabilo All Pencil. Just making sure it's dark enough that I can see where it is. So I was unsure if I was going to paint the inside of this in blue to make the, the letters be blue and just show some of the texture, or I was going to use the float technique. I opted to do the float technique with this one, and I like the effect, but I think the other would work as well, just painting the inside blue. So maybe if, if I do another one of these uh, for the craft fair, I might do it that way just to have options. But you can see how once you have a lovely background, you can do many, many things with it. So I'm just using my angle brush and I'm using doing the float technique. And there is a video in my Technique Tag series where I teach that. But if you want more, um, please leave me a comment. Uh, the flow technique is great for shading. And you can use acrylic paint, which is permanent. And you can use any color for shading and or highlighting. So the flow technique, when you do it, what you need to do is dry it in between. And I don't always do that. But when you're learning, that would lead to some frustration. And stuff. It is a technique that does take time to to get get a handle of, but it's well worth the practice. So here you see me drying it before I come in with more, especially if there's like connecting lines. If you go in when it's wet, you're going to smudge the other line, and you go over it several times and build up. Don't tr don't think to go full strength right off the bat. You just kind of build it up as you see the need. So there is the C, um, sand dollar, sorry. And I have the stencil, which is that part, and then the mask. And I am going to use the stencil part to make the major part of the sand dollar. And I'm using, this time, I'm using flexible modeling paste, which is works better for this than the light modeling paste. I want it to have that thicker kind of consistency. And I'm applying this rather liberally. So I'm cleaning up, you know, a little bit that went over there. Now, this is going to take time to dry. In fact, I leave it overnight to let that completely dry. And I've learned, you know, in other applications that, you know, especially when you want to paint it or you're, I'm going to actually stencil on top of this, you need to give it some time. So I'm edging around the canvas with some Prussian blue. And now I'm taking that Prussian blue and I'm rubbing it very so lightly over top of the textured uh, paste that where I use the segmented swirl stencil. And I'm going very, very lightly. I want that pattern to show up just a little bit more because as it was, it was all the same color and 
If you were close up, you'd see it, but you wouldn't be able to see it from far. And I wanted that to be part of the look that you get. So I'm just, I've got a makeup sponge. I'm putting it on, kind of stamping it off, off to the side, and then just rubbing. And now I'm coming in, after the, black, the Prussian Blue had dried, I'm coming in with white. And the reason for that is I find that the white will pop more with the first darker layer. And some of the places I don't have it, so now we have the light and the dark. And again with this, I'm building up layers over time. There's what you see on the, on, in the video, and then I did spend a lot of time off camera adding to it. So now I'm using the white paint and the float technique, and I'm adding highlights on the inside of the letters. This is just another way to make it pop, and hopefully you can see the difference that it makes. Just adding, you know, doing the dark on the outside and the light on the inside. And I find you get a lot of depth that way. Now, if you didn't have or didn't want to use the flow technique, you can use a charcoal pencil, you can use the Stabilo All pencil to shade around those letters and get a very similar effect. You could use a watercolor pencil. You just have to remember that some of those things are not permanent, and so you would have to spray before you added any other wet medium, or it will run and you'll lose the effect that you worked so hard to get. So again, with the white, I'm just adding, you know, I'm putting a little bit, letting it dry, coming back, adding a second, third layer till it looks good to my eyes. Now I'm using the, um, it's not Prussian blue, Payne's gray, and I'm shading around the sand dollar. And I apologize, this gets off screen. I want to zoom in so you got, can see. And then when I get in the thick of creating, I don't always look at the um, display. So I use the modeling paste and the other part of the stencil and get the, C, the star in the middle of the sand dollar. So it has like two layers of that. So I'm mixing um, unbleached titanium and silver. I want this to shine. I, it's kind of the color. I'm looking at, the, you know, testing the color here. It's got quite a nice shine. Kind of looks like the color of, a, of the real sand dollar. So I, I want that. And, and I thought that would be enough shine. And using, putting metallic paint, silver or gold, in with your other paints is one way to get other them all metallic. Kind of. When I get done this, you're going to see me add another layer. It wasn't as iridescent and as shiny as I wanted it to, to look. You can also add iridescent medium and add that to the paint color or paint it on top of a color that you have, and that might give you more. I could have tried adding more silver um, to the paint. So here I use the Martha Stewart, it's pearl paint, and it just adds a very lovely sheen to this. In my case, I'm using what I have that's available, but you know, to save yourself some crafting dollars, you know, if you do add iridescent medium to paints or silver or gold to paints, you get that shine. Oh, look at that loveliness. I will put a link to the video where I demo mixing paints with those things to get so all your paints are pearlized or metallic. So now that that has dried, I am stenciling through, put the stencil back on, and I'm putting gold through here. Now, this is why I want it gold in the background, because I knew I wanted gold in the front, and I wanted it to connect. If I had put bronze in the background, I would have used bronze here. Now, I have some brown. It's just craft paint that I have lying around, and I'm just shading 
the brown on the inside just to add a little bit more realistic color I guess to the sand dollar and I try to put some in in here kind of makes a bit of a mess so I end up taking a baby wipe and cleaning it out If you really, if it makes too big of a mess, you can repaint it with the color that you painted the base coat and start over. There's really nothing that can happen that you can't undo in some way, shape, or form. So I hope you enjoyed this. Enjoy the pictures at the end. Like, leave me a comment, share, check out the links. Bye.